Hey, Eagle fans, your Statesboro Walmart is your one-stop shop for all your Georgia Southern football and game day needs. Pick up your GSU sports gear here. We have t-shirts, hats, tote bags, koozies, stadium bleacher seats, car spirit flags, wall pennants, beads, and more right here at the best prices in town. Also, don't forget, we can handle all of your tailgating needs with our great food trays, baked goods, and fresh, high-quality meat, seafood, and chicken. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined as always by sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald, Mike Anthony. And Mike, we've had a few days to kind of come down or, or get back up after our being down after Georgia Southern losing at Georgia in a game that they played their butts off and had many opportunities to close them out. Weren't able to do that. And unfortunately, it's another loss in Athens is what it boils down to. Your thoughts on the Georgia game. We've kind of covered it from all kinds of different angles. Apparently, the, the, the blown whistle is still being talked about, the inadvertent whistle, and as well as some other things. But the bottom line is, you left with a loss once again, although you put up a heck of a fight. Well, you can, you can debate the singular plays and the what-ifs all you want, but what I think the main takeaway for this is, it was just a heck of a game against a team that had invited Georgia Southern up there five times before. Granted, they were an FCS team all five of those times and pretty much pushed them around. Georgia Southern finally you know, had, had level scholarships and showed that despite what the recruiting rankings would say, despite what Georgia fans may have thought, they had an equal team. That wasn't Georgia laying down and having a bad game. That wasn't Georgia Southern playing way over its heads. I know that a lot of guys had probably a little extra passion for the game, but it was too equally talented teams I thought on the field and Georgia a little bit better team but I don't think that this is so much of a, a, a moral victory I know no one wants to hear that especially after the close losses last year I think it is what it is Georgia Southern for the second time in three years went into an SEC team's house and beat Florida and gave another one in Georgia all they could handle and you can go back to the Georgia Tech game which they had the lead up until uh, the last 30 seconds of the game and you could argue that they Another game with NC State, it just seems like it's unfortunate that they did go Georgia Southern's way in a way against Florida, but in these other three games, at least the ones that, that I'm referring to, they had opportunity after opportunity, and just one thing, and two games involved a whistle, but you know, you, you still have to tip your hat to Georgia Southern because that's come a long way in those two years back to back, as opposed to the games where it looked like Maybe you could hang around for the first half, but inevitably you were going to fall off in the second half. And I will say to that close but no cigar, I think eventually it'll happen. Eventually it has to happen <laughs> if they keep playing this well. But I would rather be a fan of that team that keeps on pushing teams that's there every time in the late minutes of the fourth quarter. Anybody can do something like UL Monroe did a few years ago when they shock Alabama. I think one other upset for them a few years ago, but mostly they show up, take their money, and also take a four or five touchdown beating. Granted, it's tough to walk out of that stadium, Sanford Stadium, when you think the Eagles could have won it, but I would rather be the coach or a player on that team that knows it's going to be there in the final minutes against a heavily favored team every single time and maybe get one of those victories down the way than to get the one big shocker, be on ESPN, talk about it seven years later, Appalachian State, and then never win another big one. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into this week's matchup. You have South Alabama coming in, just lost to Georgia State. Georgia State's won a couple in a row, a little surprising with the way their track record has been. But you have South Alabama coming in to Paulson Stadium on a Saturday in which we've seen it in the past, even when it's been a playoff game. The fans just don't come out on the Thursday after Thanksgiving, uh, on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, rather. And unfortunately, that'll be the case here. I guess the big thing you got to watch out for if you're Georgia Southern is a hangover from the Georgia loss compiled with a team that's South Alabama who lost to Georgia State last week 
to get that air of recency, but we do know that South Alabama is capable of beating Georgia definitely a tough uh, final two games for Georgia Southern. A lot tougher than you might have figured looking at uh, August. Georgia State, they've been able to turn things around to actually get a couple FBS wins. But South Alabama, probably one of the bigger surprises in the entire conference. Last year, they were a dark horse. Some people predicted they could win the whole thing. Everything kind of went off the rails there. They, they end up qualifying for a bowl, but nowhere near the season they thought they could have. They graduated almost everybody on the two deep accepted a lot of transfers in but a lot of questions about how quickly they could come together they've been able to do it and now they're right on the verge of qualifying for another bowl and given all the variables you know a less of a crowd a little bit of a hangover like you said from georgia a possibility and a desperate team coming in here wanting to uh, get some revenge for last year's loss and also qualify for a bowl it could make for a little bit of a trap game for the eagles all right well we had a chance to talk with coach fritz and some of the players about the matchup Saturday with South Alabama. Well, you know, college football, you got to prepare, you know, for the next week. So, you know, you got to put it behind, prepare for the uh, upcoming team. So we, right now, you know, we got to put the Georgia um, loss behind us and prepare for South Alabama. Your thoughts on playing South Alabama? It's a team that, uh, that comes in needing a win to be able to go to the postseason and bowl like you guys, so you know they're going to be fired up coming in here. Uh, South Alabama, a good Sun Belt team that we're facing, you know, conference game, so you know, treat that like a championship game. And I know that they they need another win to become bowl eligible, so we can prepare, you know, as best as we can to, um, to get right for South Alabama. I feel like, you know, we got over the loss. Uh, we got over it uh, Sunday night, you know, after we had a team meeting, you know, we uh, just flushed down the toilet and uh, started looking at uh, South Alabama. Uh, you know, they're a tough, you know, tough physical team, and, uh, you know, they're going to uh, give us everything they got. Um, they're trying to get both eligible, so uh, we know they're going to come out to play, and we just got to play hard. Offensively, you str struggled a little bit uh, in a couple of games. Do you feel like you guys are healthy enough to be able to be successful on Saturday? Oh, yes. You know, I feel like, you know, we're uh, definitely healthy enough and we're ready to go. Um, you know, we just played uh, two great opponents the last two games, so um, give credit to them. But, uh, you know, I feel like we're fine and we'll, we'll do great this Saturday. It's a tough loss, but uh, I feel like uh, South Alabama is going to have to pay for, uh, you know, the loss that we just took this past week. Yeah, they're a very good team. Uh, they play Arkansas State very well, who's also leading the conference. So we know that uh, they're no slouch team. We're going to have to come with our A game. Oh, we just got to, it's one of those things where it's big win, big loss, no matter what. You got to be able to flush it down and go on to the next week. Uh, it would have been great to go ahead and finish out that game. Well, it was one of those things where it didn't happen. We just can't, we can't dwell on it. We got to keep on moving because we still got a couple more games at home. And we have uh, South Alabama, which is a good opponent coming in town. And we gotta we gotta go ahead and be prepared for them because we just still got we still got these two more games. Got to finish out this season. Try to hope to make it to the best bowl game we can make it to. South Alabama, they're gonna um, try to run the ball. Uh, they're running. They had two really good running backs, and um, uh, they're gonna try to they're gonna try to run the ball, steps the run. And if they can't get the run, then they're gonna throw it. The quarterback, he's uh, he has a really good arm. He gets to throw the ball around. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a different type of ball game than the last game. You know, they've kind of had a little bit of an up and down season. And, uh... You know, played real well two weeks ago, beating Lafayette. And uh, had a tough game last week against Georgia State. Georgia State really does a good job of throwing the ball around and much improved. So I'm, I'm sure their rallying cry is going to be, you know, uh, getting bowl eligible. And uh, five and five right now, uh, you know, I'm sure that's what their intentions is to, you know, win one more ball game and, and have an opportunity to get bowl eligible. We need to, to come out and play great Saturday. I'm very uh, happy that we're playing back at home again. Toyotathon is on at Franklin Toyota. Hundreds of new Toyotas are Toyotathon priced. Save up to seven thousand off 2015 Avalons, or get up to six thousand off 2015 Prius. Find it at Franklin Toyota in Statesboro. All right, Mike. Now it's time where we kind of put on our get our crystal ball set, and we've done pretty good. I mean, you know, you you said it. You thought it was going to be a pretty close game. I had Georgia Southern winning a close one by two. Could have happened either way. We are both, neither one of us thought it was going to be a blowout, and we both thought it would be a pretty low scoring game. So let's get into the South Alabama game. The odds makers have this as Georgia Southern by 21, which to me is a little too many points. But I could see our defense holding them, and then all you got to do is score 21 24, and you've got the uh, cover. Your thoughts on the game here, Saturday? Well, I think you touched on it there. For the first time, I think it might be the Georgia Southern defense that's really dictating where this line's going. The offense a little bit banged up. 
uh, during the Georgia game on into this week. Coach Fritz pretty hopeful that most of those guys will be able to be on the field on a Saturday, but as explosive as the offense can be, it's really been the defense allowing just about 450 yards total in their last two Sunbelt games against two decent offenses in Texas State and Troy. Georgia's offense really had to be helped out to get a lot of the yards, a lot of the points that they were able to get on Georgia Southern. So I think that this defense going up against another good quarterback, uh, one of those UAB transfers, South Alabama, they can they can throw the ball around. I know Coach Fritz is impressed by their size, an NFL prospect at tight end. So it'll be another tough test for the secondary, but they've been rising to the occasion throughout the last month. I think 21's a little bit too much to cover, but I do like Georgia Southern to have this one put away in the fourth quarter. I'm going to go with Georgia Southern 31, South Alabama 14. All right, I'm going close to what you are. I'm saying 27 to 7, Georgia Southern on top, which would put it right there at the 20 points. Sorry for you guys uh, wanting to get a definitive uh, out, out of us. I think we both think that might be a little too many points. All right, well, before we go, let's briefly mention about the Georgia Southern men and women's basketball teams, the guys up in the Spartanburg area. The ladies are about to go to Athens, take on what's always a tough Georgia team. Uh, the, the guys, uh, a tough road so far, a couple of SEC games, got real close against Ole Miss, uh, fouled about a million times, I think. <laughs> a lot of whistles going on, but we've been told that that's what you need to expect all year, not just from this Georgia Southern team, but from NCAA basketball as a whole. They're getting a lot more whistle happy. So defense, it was key last year. It's going to have to be key this year without so much uh, touching and grabbing and all that. But a, a close loss to Ole Miss. Auburn, they hung around with for a while. Auburn, though, a very good team. They stretched out in the second half. I think that this week they'll get right a little bit going to South Carolina. Uh, the Citadel, a team that gave them fits in the SOCON, they'll have a matchup with them. Also, USC Upstate, hopefully a chance to get a win, maybe two wins, get a little bit of momentum going into uh, next week's home game against Bob Jones. All right, and then for the women, trip to Athens. They're, a wi they're winless right now. It doesn't look to get any better with that game. It's going to be tough. UGA always a solid program. They've taken care of business against Georgia Southern many times before, but I like the direction that this team's going. So many returning starters, uh, four out of five returning starters, 11 of the top 12 leading scorers from last year back on this team. Talking to new head coach Kip Drown his first year with the Eagles, he seems to think that everybody's bought in. You can see it a little bit. Uh, a little bit better flow. I think that when the entire system sinks in, this is a well-conditioned team, a veteran team, and as soon as they start to run the X's and O's right, I think you'll see a few more wins. All right, well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Arbor, hoping you have a happy Thanksgiving. Look forward to seeing you again next week.